Much like Huawei and ZTE, TikTok has become part of the geopolitical Cold War between the US and China, getting the month of August off to the wrong start for the Western markets. The video sharing social media app, which has more than half a billion active users worldwide, is owned by Chinese company ByteDance, opening it up with accusations over personal data abuses. And that is exactly what Trump did, stating he would ban the app if changes weren't made, namely ByteDance divesting its ownership of uh, TikTok's US operations. Trump's comments came as Microsoft and ByteDance were in late stage talks over, buy, over buying TikTok's US operations, a move that would also involve the American firm handling the app's data domestically, as well as in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Those talks paused momentarily as both sides tried to ascertain the position of the US government, but are now set to continue after a conversation between Microsoft CEO Satar, Satar uh, Nadala and the president. What actually happens with TikTok realistically is less important than the fact that Trump went after the company in the first place. A soft way to attack China via a service that is becoming an increasingly prominent part of American teenage life. Though it isn't as traditional as closing the consulate in Houston, it's another needling move by the president ahead of November's election, designed to draw focus away from domestic issues. And I guess the market sphere is if this continues, we could see further and further escalation between the two countries, getting into a situation like we were in uh, a year or two ago, in the, in the thick of it in terms of the US China negotiations, where tariffs became um, a major source of anxiety for investors. In terms of data, a new month means only one thing. It's time for a fresh non-farm jobs report on Friday. Uh, the last couple of months have seen the US economy try and claw back some of the jobs lost in April, with 2.5 million jobs surprisingly created in May and a further 4.8 million created in June. However, July has been a rough one in the US with multiple states having to re-enter various forms of lockdown, especially in major um, population hubs like California. How this will come to impact July as on farm reading is, is unclear at the moment. Will jobs that have been created or are investors facing another negative number? Uh, analysts are expecting 1.51 million jobs to have been created uh, over July. Though it's worth noting that for the last four months, you know, basically the coronavirus pandemic period, forecasts have tended to be off in some cases by as much as 10 million, uh, be that positive or negative. Uh, the unemployment rate, meanwhile, is set to dip from 11.1% to 10.5%, which is interesting given that at one point the American unemployment rate was expected to hit 19.5%, but has got nowhere near that in the last few months. While wage growth is also expected to see an improvement from minus 1.2% to minus 1.5% month on month. Beyond Friday's main event, there are the manufacturing PMIs on Monday, factory orders on Tuesday, the services PMIs and ADP non-farm data on Wednesday, and the usual dreaded job list claims reading on Thursday. All this obviously is alongside the now permanent hum of COVID-19 anxiety, which hasn't gone away in the US at all, but does seem to have been shifted down the, uh, down the running order in terms of market concerns at the moment, be it because of the more prominent now second wave fears in Europe and increasingly the UK, or the situation between the US and China sort of overtaking the America's COVID-19 situation as the most prominent uh, market worrying factor uh, in late July and early August.